Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Miranda. I'm an assistant marketing manager at Bloomsbury Children's Books, and I'm really excited to introduce our two authors who are going to be in conversation today, Alexis Ned and Phil Stamper. Alexis Ned is a Brooklyn-based pop culture anthropologist and senior entertainment reporter at Mashable. Her debut novel, Don't Hate the Player, is a charming and heartfelt young adult romance set in the world of esports, and it's sure to be loved by gamers and non-gamers alike. New York Times bestselling author Casey McQuiston called it wildly smart and genuinely hilarious, and it has also received a starred review from Kirkus. Bill Stamper is the author of As Far As You'll Take Me, um, which is best-selling Leah Best-selling author Leah Johnson has called a beautiful tribute to every queer kid who has ever had to leave their home to find a new one. It's a sweet and compelling coming of age story that explores themes of self-acceptance, found family, and mental health. Phil's first book, The Gravity of Us, received a starred, view, starred reviews from Booklist and Bookpage and was on the Indie Next list and made the 2021 Rainbow Book List. So I'm really happy to have you both here. Um, just tell us a little bit about your book. Sure, uh, Alexis, do you wanna go first? Uh, sure, I mean, I've <laughs> also got this one right here. So uh, thank you, Jasmine, for the intro. Uh, my book is called Don't Hate the Player. Um, and it's about a Puerto Rican teenager. Her name is Amelia. And she is a, a, a great student, great athlete. She is like, you know, a little miss perfect, but she has a very big secret. Your secret is she's actually a massive nerd. She is obsessed with this video game called Guardians League Online. And she, by night, is a competitive player in this game. And since, you know, her parents wouldn't be nuts about her playing a video game, and being a woman of color in video games isn't always the safest place to be, she keeps those two parts of her life completely separate. And then just happens to meet the one person who would be able to connect the two dots in her life, which is a boy who goes to her school, who both plays GLO and also knows Amelia. And together they have to work to keep her secret. And I mean, it's a YA romance, so you can probably guess what happens next. All right, and I'm uh, Phil Stamper, author of As Far As You'll Take Me, which is right there in my bookshelf. Uh, so As Far As You'll Take Me follows 17-year-old Marty Pierce, who leaves an unwelcome living environment in rural Kentucky uh, to pursue his dreams of being a professional musician in London, of all places. Uh, and along the way, he finds friends who become his new family. He falls in love with the literal first boy that he meets which doesn't always go well, um, spoilers. Um, and uh, he kind of discovers who he is, as corny as that sounds. Um, and this is my second book, Gravity of Us was my debut, but this is my follow-up novel. And um, yeah, I'm just so proud to have been able to put so much music and gay stuff all into <laughs> one book. So both of you guys are authors of romances. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think are great elements for teen romances? Ooh, Ooh great I'll, elements. Oh, I'll you go, you go ahead. first. Yeah, I'll jump in first. So it's mine's a little complicated. I don't pitch as far as you'll take me as a romance because in my mind, the traditional romance has a happily ever after. Um, Marty, you'll see in his journey is a, like a fantastic character journey for him but the main couple you know I, I say right off the bat um you know it's it's not a great relationship but I think the point in that was it's so relatable to fall in love with someone and want to change yourself for them want to be everything that they want even if they're not giving it back to you especially when you've been a repressed gay kid for your entire life and that's your first chance at like real love but the stakes feel so high and I really wanted to cover that because in The Gravity of Us um, which I loved writing um, that was totally a whirlwind romance um, kind of love at first sight kind of moment that I, I just really wanted to capture because we don't get a lot of those stories on shelves either for queer teens um, so in my mind, I was able to play with all the different elements between these two books, um, and I think what what makes you know what makes the the best YA romance is always this element of hope of what's going on, what's going to happen in the future, of the potential of things, of becoming who you are. And I try to throw that line with both my books, even though I wouldn't classify this one as a strict romance, but there are plenty of romantic elements. I mean, you have a charming British guy, you know, you're going to have some romantic elements there. 
I mean, it's it's nice that, that you say that, Phil, because I, I didn't know very much about as far as you'll take me going into it. And, you know, when, when, when I started the book, it's like, okay, he's going to London, he's going to learn music, and then he meets Pierce, and I was like, oh, I see where this is going. And it is not where I thought that was going whatsoever. Wow. And, you know, as, as beautiful and as devastating as it gets for Marty at some points in the book, in the beginning, I was, I wanted him to end up with someone. And by the end of it, I was like, I hope this guy just loves himself by the end. So like, it's like <laughs> the, the romance was just like Marty and Marty figuring himself I, out. I don't usually pitch it as a self-love thing, but it is so like, that is, that is what you should be focusing on as a teenager sometimes is like, if you should be loving yourself and if you, it's, I mean, so cliche, like if you can't love yourself, how are you gonna love somebody else? But literally that is that is the theme of this book. Yeah. Um, and it was so fun to play with because you know we don't get that in a lot of romances. So when I was writing Don't Hate the Player, this is my first novel. And so I guess by default, my first romance, I've never really written a romance before. I was focused on her, my main character, at least, the, the things that I would have wanted to read when I was in high school about someone who was like me in a book who was, who was finding love. And what I kind of zeroed in on with these characters that are also the things that I used to like to read about was finding someone who doesn't really make you explain yourself, um, who will also, who's not afraid to, you know, call you out if you're, if you're not, you know, being an okay person to other people. Like I think my protagonist can be kind of a jerk to people sometimes, but to find a, a person who sees all of what you're doing and is like, I, I see you as a, as a whole person and I, I accept that about you. And you, you don't have to you know, sing or dance or, or juggle or do anything to get me to like you. And to have that happen to mutually for two people at the exact same time is so much rarer than I knew when I was in high school. So that, to my, so that alone is kind of a uh, type of connection that I'm really interested in. Finding like what, what would make those, those two people click so easily without it being you know perfect and magical and fairies one thing i really liked um was actually how you established the characters for us uh, which is in the prologue which not all i'm not always a fan of prologues uh, it depends on the scenario but in this case like i feel like it added so much because like you know exactly who these two characters are from page literally from page one and you're rooting for them before you even get to see them as teenagers because they're actually i think in middle school um, yeah. when we start the story um can you talk a little bit like was that always was that always your plan was to start at, like with this prologue is that like the first scene you wrote or was that something you added in later to kind of establish them along the yeah. way it wasn't the first thing I wrote but I knew that I wanted to for I knew that I wanted Jake and Amelia to know each other before they were teenagers because I wanted Jake in particular to kind of have this admiration for her that he doesn't know what to do with um, and the way that that made sense to me was you know they would bond over games and then where do you know middle schoolers end up playing games together you know if you lived in a cool like a cool town with a cool mall it was the arcade so I think it was more that I knew they had to meet when they were younger I didn't know if it was going to be a prologue or flashbacks or something but I felt it ended up being much simpler to just start out where they're in fourth grade and then just like fast forward 10 years and you know they're uh much older yeah you fit a lot of character into that uh like six pages or it's like it's not even long but it's still it's like such a nice start to the book because you kind of get that cozy feel um, right off the bat, which I think is what you were talking about as like the biggest element of that, their bond. Yeah, thank uh, you. So, yeah. Your novels are kind of set in very specific places like London and, or just, a, just situations like an esports tournament. So I wondered if you guys had any research that went into the writing process. Ooh. Um, Do you wanna go first? Wanna, yeah. I, I feel like you have a lot. This, this like, like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of at the start of the of this whole, you know, talking about the, the book thing. So I'm like, I wonder, like, what what parts can I like actually knowledge drop? Um, one of the actually, as far as research goes for the the tournament, um, I didn't know where to set this book at all when I started. I I was writing chapters and I was like somewhere in America, uh, and then I actually saw online that um, the I think the the country's first all esports arena is currently being built in Philly. 
Um, and I was like, wow, like we actually are having actual sports complexes dedicated to just people playing games. So I didn't use that arena particularly, but I sort of did a spin on that where like Philly is about to be the hub of esports in America. So I was like, okay, I guess we're gonna have, you know, Philadelphia suburban teens at an esports tournament. And this is kind of where it has to be. So that was the, the location research was also there reading about Philly and cause I'm from, New I'm from Jersey. Um, so that was that was sort of the the extent of making that location make sense. I mean, the rest of the research was I'm just a, a gamer and video games are sort of my second home. So less research, more breathing on, on that part. How about you? Oh, and you you even built like a world within the world because you had to make that entire video game. So it's kind of like world building within your world building. Yeah, that was the hard part, but it was very fun. Yeah, I mean, you could tell that a lot of like research and thought and like previous knowledge kind of went into it um but for me for as far as you'll take me um so uh, I almost said this is a secret it's not a secret because I sell this at like every event um that I've ever had for this uh but I actually wrote as far as you'll take me the very first draft of it before the gravity of us um so this is the manuscript that got me my current agent it didn't sell um but the gravity of us did because I, I mean I would just write kind of back to back because when one was on submission, I would write another one because that was the only way to make my brain stop screaming. Um, and so I wrote The Gravity of Us, that ended up selling. And I really wanted this to be my um, second book. But when I wrote this, it was back in 2015 and I was just finishing up a graduate program in London. And I really, I'm not much of like a diary person. I'm not a scrapbooker. I try to keep things from London, but um, we took a lot of travels during that time. And other than postcards, I didn't really keep much. And one of the things that I really wanted to do when I was writing this book um, is I knew that I wanted this you know, queer, queer character to want to leave Kentucky. And it just made sense. Like I was currently living in London. Of course, I'm gonna set it in London because what is a bigger move that one person can have than from Kentucky to London? In my mind, I was like, that's it. Like that's, that's, the, that's the peak of, uh, of culture shock for this like poor repressed kid. Uh, however, uh, when I did that, I mean, I mean, there, there were so many travels that we did that I was able to fit into the book. And that was, I mean, that was really fun for me. And those scenes actually did not change much through all of the drafts. I had to completely rewrite this book when I uh, went from, when I sent it to my editor and was like, hey, you know, this is, I had this book on submission for a while. I'm not sure if this could be my second one, but I feel really passionate about it. I would totally gut it if you wanted me to, but there's something here and I really want to pursue it. Um, and I did have to rewrite it, which, almost harder than writing a whole new book, um, in my opinion. <laughs> However, totally worth it because I got to kind of revisit London, but those scenes really didn't change because I had really kept those travel scenes as my diary. So it was all places I'd gone. Of course, the drama, the characters, everything is all made up, but I really loved um, the concept of having a, a friend group that you find in another country that just becomes your group, like your family, your clique, your everything. Um, so I took that from London, that concept, um, from my experience in London. And then I was like, I want them to, I want this to be like a really, you know, it can be a really heavy book in, at times, but also I want him to enjoy travel. Like I want him to enjoy like what the experience of living in London is like. Um, and I, I wanted him to have that because coming from, you know, rural America is, is like, you don't get a lot of these experiences. And so I really wanted to give them to him. So I, all of the travels that they do to like, they go to Florence and Pisa, and then they go to um, Cardiff and, you know, other places yeah. around. I put them all into the book um, from my own experiences. So that was how I did kind of research for it. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it was so much fun to like, just kind of capture it that way. And I also got to write it from an American's perspective because I put, I threw an American in there. Um, so that's why I was like, okay, like I, I don't know exactly how a British person thinks. Um, however, I do know how a, a flustered, anxious American thinks in these moments. So I could definitely work off of that. I keep smiling because you did that very perfectly. I did my study abroad in London oh, and- nice. It was, you know, my first long-term stay abroad and we went to Pisa and we went to Florence. We didn't do Cardiff. I kind of wish that we did Cardiff. Um, and That's so pretty. much of Marty's like initial reaction, especially Florence, which is yeah. also just like, just like a climax of the heart in that book. But just you, you can feel his sense of self is expanding while his world is mm -hmm. actually physically expanding around him. And I thought that was so brilliant. 
and so much yeah. how I felt when I was studying uh, there. You. And, you know, London's a great hub. You, you travel from there. And I was so mm -hmm. glad that he got to have that experience because he was he was growing and he was, you know, becoming bigger and, and, and more more vast emotionally as he was going there. I love that. I love all have you that. have you ever watched the movie um, while you were sleeping? Do you know that from the 90s with Sandra Bullock? It's a it's a classic rom com. That... I was I was gonna say yes, but I realized I'm thinking about Sleepless in Seattle. So no. Oh wait, no. So they, I'm they, that was when she thinks she uh, she says that he was gonna marry a guy, but he was in a coma. I have yes, seen. Yes. Yes. Uh, so they they came out at similar times. So I mean, I'm a huge like '90s rom com person. Um, but there's there's like this kind of there's a scene there where she is um, where she has like always wanted to travel and the the love the actual love interest not the one in a coma uh, asks her like what where she would go and she answers immediately and she said I think she she either says Italy or Florence but she says Florence because like her dad and her like always talked about going to Florence and I really wanted that energy of like just where's one place you want to go Florence I I like grew up not knowing anything about the world but I had this one guidebook or this one Thing that I could hold on to, um, and that kind of wonder is what kind of kind of pulls him through the whole story. Even if he is going through a really hard time, he still can appreciate like what he's experiencing, and that was that was huge for me. But also very hard to kind of balance because you're trying to get a lot of plot in there, but yeah. then also character it's a, stuff. It's a hard feeling to to capture in almost any medium, and I thought you did it very well because it took me right back. Thank you. Right back to being in Florence for the first time. We, got, we kind of got off there, Jasmine, sorry about no, that. No, it's fine. I love, love the conversation. Um, the last question I have for you guys is, uh, what message you're hoping young readers will take away from your book? Ooh. Do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, I, so I think in, in really in both of my books, like the main theme or the main takeaway is, is just hope, hope for the future, hope for your future as the reader. Um, because even though they tell very different stories, like this is a more like an idyllic love story. Uh, this is much less so, but more of a personal, like I am finding myself type of story. For both of them, there's so much hope at the end of the book that you just kind of, I wanted that like warm, fuzzy feeling at the end of, of, of really all the books that I write. And that's just kind of a theme because I felt like so often as a teen, I didn't really have that kind of hope. Of course, I saw movies that, that, that gave me that kind of energy, but I never really got to see myself in that way on the, bookshelf, uh, on the bookshelves. And so giving that kind of hope was really important to me. And I'm sure you relate in, the, in a very similar way, but it's just, it was something that I just, I, I wanted them to say like, oh, I see myself in this. I, I even, if, even if really, you know, the, straight random people read it and can't relate I still want everyone to come away with like wow there's so much hope in the story and it gives me hope for the future for my future uh, even if I don't have everything figured out right now I think that's I definitely got that out of I mean it's especially towards the towards the end I almost didn't want it to end but I realized I was like I'm actually leaving Marty at a pretty good place like he like from here he has a really good shot at being okay. So I was more okay at the end than I was leading up to the end because I wanted a little bit more, but after I was like, you know what, you're gonna be okay, kid, it's fine. Um, and for Don't Hate the Player, what the, the kind of through line that I had that I want people to take away from it is that you are not alone even when you think you have to be alone. I think especially after this year, the idea of just like kind of closing off to feel safe to feel like nobody can touch you, nobody can hurt you if like you're always protecting yourself. Um, but in, in this, this book, that's really not the way to kind of accomplish any of your, your goals. Uh, I'm a good kind of person where it's very hard for me to ask for help even to this day, but I think that's one of the most valuable things anybody can learn, especially when you're, when you're younger. So I would say that what I want people to take away is uh, it's, it's okay to open up. You can sometimes trust people and you don't have to go at everything alone at all. You can get other people to help you because people do love you and they will help you. Yeah, that absolutely came through too. Okay, thank you guys for being with us today. Um, as far as you'll take me is available now. Um, don't Hate the Player comes out in June. It's a great, they're both great books and you should definitely read them. Uh, thanks for joining.